YouTube, what's going on? Solution for the Solution for Kicks. Back with another video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and tap that notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these things and you too can be a part of the Mighty Ford Kicks Brigade. So shout out to DJ Cool Herc. It's known as the, um, the godfather of hip hop culture. So people were saying hip hop music. No, you live hip hop culture. You listen to rap music. So let's get it started because one of the elements of the culture is fashion. And as sneakerheads, you are part of a subgenre of hip hop culture. So let me give you a little history lesson from an OG's perspective. In the beginning, we had B-boys who break dance, they, they did all that good stuff, they look cool, and they had to just basically decide what we're gonna wear as fashion within our culture. And it migrated from the leather vest and the jeans and all that stuff and the suits and some of the more flamboyant styles until we know as the b-boy okay the b-boy look the b-boy look which is from breakdancing okay popping the lock and you have to be as comfortable as possible to perform a lot of these moves now trust me i used to break dance i was a b-boy very young b-boy but as the people that know me when i was a really really young boy i was kind of like the the gimmick of the crew from the neighborhood yeah, my old self used to spin on my head and flip and all that stuff. But anyway, I wore certain shoes that actually allowed me to move a little bit more freely. And it basically was a, a statement of my style. In the beginning, we had the Puma Suede, which was basically like one of the staple. You had a lot of the brands out there, like the Pro Kids and the Ponies and stuff. But this was the grail of the B-Boys fashion style. This was the go-to shoe. Not in this colorway obviously all right not in the seattle uh seahawks colorway but this design right here and the leather version was called the clyde they also had a hot top version that came out but believe it or not this is a basketball shoe so we took a lot of our fashion hits from the court the warm-up sweatsuits and of course the shoes so you had the puma suede and the clyde um known for walt clyde frazier then another basketball shoe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar actually wore these, believe it or not. This was another, believe it or not, look, technology's come a long, long way. If you think about it, Chucks, which really wasn't a big staple of the hip hop culture um, in the beginning. All right, it caught on later on out in the West Coast and spread, but that was a basketball sneaker. So I'm not really showing that as a true staple element of the culture, it came later on. We're talking about the beginning, but the Shell Toe, AKA the Superstar, made famous by Run DMC. You know, hold your shell toes in the air. They had 30,000 people at the garden doing that, 20,000, however much the garden holds. So clearly, rappers started rapping about sneakers back then. But let's get into it. What was the shoe that really started all, and you could probably see it in the back a little bit, is right here, but not in that particular model. It started in 1982 with the Air Force One which was a basketball shoe. And I'm gonna show you the high top version. Obviously, this is not an OG colorway. This sneaker was a basketball shoe, believe it or not. A lot of you wanna credit Rasheed Walker, with, um, Rasheed Wiles, excuse me. Rasheed Wiles was actually making this sneaker what it is, but no, it was Moses Malone. Okay, this clunky, uh, casual sneaker now has been classified was a basketball sneaker with the air unit running through it and um, excellent stability, held up really well in the court indoor and outdoor and of course it had the support strap if you're from the east coast you know we do this and being older now i find this annoying <laughs> i don't really do this anymore as much i might wrap it around but from time to time i take it back to where i'm from so the story of the air force one goes like this this sneaker was very very popular on the east coast with a couple of names um uptowns ups you know um, what is it? Uh, crispy whites, all this stuff. All right, forces if you're from Baltimore. And I'm gonna talk about Baltimore in a second. So as people were hunting for sneakers back then, remember it was a staple of our fashion, a lot of stores didn't have a lot of variety with the colorways. So they would travel up and down the East Coast, anywhere from Richmond up to Boston and any point in between. Then sneakerheads found out, hey, Baltimore has so many stores with so many different colorways, let's hit up there to get the different flavors. And this was basically the start of resellers, all right? Believe it or not. DJ Clark Kent talks about this in a documentary. This is really the start of resellers, all right? So resellers, I'm giving you little props right here. 
but you weren't really needed because the stores had so many pairs. Speaking of so many pairs, Nike said this shoe was not selling very well nationwide. They were not paying attention to that mid-Atlantic East Coast market where we wanted these, all right? And I just told you, everybody was traveling around trying to get a hold of this sneaker. So there was a guy named Charlie Rudo from Rudo Sports. Charlie Rudo, staple sportswear sneaker show, um, store in Baltimore, Maryland. He called Nike and said, hey, don't discontinue that shoe. We can't keep these on the shelves. Send me everything you got. Baltimore saved the Air Force One. So let's get into the OG colorway that everybody goes for. Now, this sneaker is so popular, it's so timeless. They have tampered with it and done great things with it. They have tampered with it and completely ruined it into some colorways and options that you probably never want to touch and put on your feet, but they're out there if you deem so that you want them. But this is basically a requirement. And this sneaker was really, really pushed in the rap culture by a couple of rappers, but you did not start this, by the way. Baltimore started this, making the sneaker really what it was. With um, Harlem, New York, one year, that's actually um, an ode to um, Harlem. I actually sold that sneaker, all right? It had Spanish Harlem on it, a couple of different neighborhoods and stuff like that. But when they couldn't get the sneaker, we saved the sneaker and kept it in production. So you had to have a pair of these. You know the story of Fat Joe licking the bottom of the sneaker. You know the story of Dr. Dre having a pair for almost every day. And of course, you know the story of Nelly taking credit for really making the sneaker famous. And no, you didn't, Nelly, okay? You made this sneaker desirable to mainstream. We were already wearing these. Before I was on my retro Jordan craze, this is all I wore, okay? I would not wear retro joints. It was pretty much any Air Force One. That was my thing and a, a couple other, uh, you know, old school sneakers, but you obviously you have to have these in your collection. You can't go wrong. You you, cre you crease them up, um, you get them dirty, you get another pair. Coming in at $90, you can't really beat it. They don't go on sale. They don't have to go on sale. People are gonna buy them anyway, all right? And um, they started putting some crappy material on these and it seemed like they're back to it because the sneaker sells out all the time, okay? Especially here in San Antonio. They can't keep this shoe on the shelf. This sneaker is obviously on sale. It, it is very, very unique. Um, it, yes, very, very unique sneaker. I liked it, all right? It's, it's just so different. I wanted them. People say, man, you should have waited on those, but I, I had to have them. It's something different. Um, I didn't own any of the Black History Month uh, colorways, so this is a dope sneaker in my collection, in my opinion. I like it, I like different stuff, and I love the Air Force One. All right, and you've seen this in my videos back in the day. I was beating this sneaker up. I wore it home on a visit back in um, May of 2017, I think, and um, that's when I started creasing it, see? See that? Nice little creasing right there. I really don't care, this is a dope sneaker, man. Another favorite pair of mine. You know, the um, Independence Day joints. All right, they came up, it was a Lakers colorway, and I think they want to call it a Celtics colorway, but great, just the, the materials on these. The, this is probably one of the better made Air Force Ones in a long time. I haven't worn these in a while. So we're gonna burn through these in some of the different iterations. I'm not, oh, all right, probably one of the, the more not so desired silhouettes of the Air Force One and it's the special field Air Force One mid. Now the reason why I had this was because they did a um, a, um, a version of this honor in Baltimore and it's basically the same sneaker as Baltimore on the tag. Shout out to Lucci Street Kicks, he actually owns those and I couldn't get my hands on that pair. One day I will get those if I track them down and it comes with a nice box with a cartoon well, um, comic book on it talking about how Baltimore saved the Air Force One. Probably the most luxurious of the pair, the Vachetta Air Force One. I had to clean these up. I actually attempted to shoot this video a while ago and um, I realized the sneaker was just nasty, man. Um, I was out all day in these the last time I wore them, but I love these. Got these from the uh, Post Exchange and you can see that the, the tongue patch comes off on it. This sneaker is over 10 years old and is very near and dear to me because 
my daughter and I actually had these together. All right, and there's a picture of us um, somewhere around here, probably one of my photo albums with us wearing these. And um, I love the Aqua Eights. I couldn't get them, but I had these in my collection. And these are dust magnets, but recently I found out that they're dying on me, okay? It's a 10 year old sneaker. It's not from the silica packs, okay? It's not the silica packs on it. It's just an old sneaker and it's coming apart. You see that? Got some soul separation right there, but that's a simple fix if I really wanted to fix it. Speaking of the special feel, this was the first pair I got and there's another version of this that's um, somewhat more limited. And it's the gum bottom special feel Air Force One. Everybody was going crazy when this sneaker dropped, but the other version, the entire bottom is gum, like the mids that I have. And um, I had to get these. I was actually beating these up a little bit. I got a little heel drag, if you look closely. All right. See that up in the corner? I was wearing these quite a bit. I love the SF. Matter of fact, shout out to the SF. These sneakers let me know I knew what I was doing on YouTube because some of my, my biggest views initially came from this sneaker. They helped me get my first Google check. Oh yeah. All right, this is another one that I hunted down and actually was able to, to bag. And the thing about this, um, this flax thing they were doing, let me tell y'all something. It says WB on it, your feet are going to freeze. All right, these are not warm. It's, it's not a boot, y'all, so don't say that. Just like the special field, okay? Just like this, uh, the SF is not a boot, y'all. Don't let your feet find out the hard way. But these are straight up unworn. I keep forgetting about them for some reason. I never get around to wearing them. One of my more unusual pair of Air Force Ones is the Stealth Anthracite. I just recently wore these. I wore these to San Antonio's, um... <laughs> they say they have an aquarium. They, they got some fish in a couple of containers out there. <laughs> but yeah, dope sneak, a lot of iridescence, a lot of, you know, the change in colors and 3M and stuff on there, if you can see that. The sneaker is very, very unique. They actually have another version of this that I should have gotten, I didn't get it. I passed on them. I'm kicking myself a little bit. Let me talk about that aquarium for a second. San Antonio's aquarium is so hood, it's ridiculous. It, it's like somebody had a bunch of dish, different uh, species of fish and they got some birds and some other animals and say, hey, you know, let me put my collection in here and let people come in and pay to see this stuff. It, it's terrible. Somebody stole a shark out of there. A little small shark. I forgot the name, a lemon shark or something. I forgot the name of the shark they stole, whatever it was, but no lie, look it up. They stole the shark from the aquarium. But that is it for my favorite sneaker of all time, the Nike Air Force One, whether it's in a mid, a high, a low. A lot of people don't like mids. I don't own any more mids. I sold all my mids. I wasn't wearing them. Um, I don't have any problems with mids, all right? Just like mid Jordans. I don't have a problem with mids. I love them but I just wasn't wearing them. And I'm getting rid of sneakers that I really no longer wear anymore. So that was the thing. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the videos We went down memory lane and I basically paid an ode to hip hop culture in this anniversary, along with hands down the most iconic sneaker ever in the sneaker world, which is a Nike Air Force One. And I'm out of here. Comment, like, subscribe, tap that notification, and do drop down in the comment box so we can chop it up. I love to interact with you all, and I'm out of here. Boom.